Hi, welcome back to Giga Zombies in Lab channel. Firstly, I would like to say thank you so much for watching this video. Today, I'm gonna talk about the switching power supply bath converter in DC to DC application. Typically, there are two types of switching power supply in DC to DC application. The first one is bath converter, and the second one is bus converter. Let's assume there are two power supply, PS1 and PS2, and each power supply has the input voltage V in and output voltage V out. If we apply plus 10 volt as the V in to PS1, we will receive the plus 5 volt as the V out. What about if we apply the plus 5 volt as the V in to PS2 and we will receive plus 10 volt as the V out. So in this case, PS1 is reduced the voltage from high voltage to low voltage and PS2 is increased from low voltage to high voltage. So in this case, we will give name PS1 as bad converter and PS2 as bus converter. So which means bad converter is reducing the voltage from high voltage to low voltage and bus converter is increasing the voltage from low voltage to high voltage. Before we talk about the bad converter, the only thing that we need to understand is how a PWM signal is look like. Here is the PWM signal. We are using this PWM signal in the logic level is plus 12 volt and JD circuit is 50%. The only thing that we need to understand is every PWM signal has their respective every voltage based on their respective duty circuit, respective logic level, and their respective frequency. Okay, so the way how we can calculate the every voltage of this PWM signal is by multiplying the logic level voltage and the duty circuit. Here, the logic level is plus 12 and GD circuit is 50%. So, by multiplying plus 12 and 50%, we will receive plus 6 volt. So, we are able to say the average volume of this PWM signal is plus 6 volts. But in this case, plus 6 volt is an average volume. So, which means we are not able to use this plus 6 volt in the application because this is just the average volume, not an actual volume. So, the way how we can convert this every voltage to actual voltage is by applying that PWM signal to the LC filter. By applying that PWM signal to the LC filter, we will receive the straight line plus 6 volt. Okay, so let's take a look on the general back converter. Here is the general back converter. In this general back converter, this is the input voltage session. This is the MOSFET session. The function of the MOSFET is to convert the input voltage to PWM signal. After that, this is the uh, LC filter session and this is the flyweight diode session. The way why we use the flyweight diode session is because we are he here we're using X integer and capacitor circuitry. So just like what we do in the relay circuitry, because of the in order to protect the back EMF, we have to use the flyweight diode. Here is the load session using the output voltage of the back converter circuit. Okay, so the way how we drive the MOSF is by the PWM controller. In this case, the output of the bath converter may be vary because of the chaining load and also because of the current consumption. So in order to make the output voltage as a stable, we have to put the voltage divider circuitry as a feedback to the PWM controller. In the market, a lot of bath converter ICs are available in the various types of package. We can distinguish the bath converter IC into two versions. The first one is fixed version and the second one is adjustable version. The adjustable version is the combination of MOSFET and PWM controller in a single chip. Also like the fixed version, fixed version is also the combination of MOSFET, PWM controller and voltage divider circuitry on a single chip. Okay, so the way how we design the bath converter is like this. Firstly, we have to understand what is our requirement? So which means, firstly, we need to write down our requirement. In this case, uh, let's have shown we would like to apply the plus 30 volt. After that, we would like to get the plus 5 volt output and we would like to use the load as the 3 ampere. So after writing down the requirement, we need to choose the IC. In this case, I would like to choose the LM2596 or LM2596HV. Uh, LM2596 is the typical version and LM2596HV is the high voltage version. The differences between typical version and high voltage version is typical version is able to apply up to plus 40 volt as an input voltage. In this case, LM2596HV high voltage version is able to apply up to 
57 volt. In this case, this, this particular IC is available in, in full version, 3.3 volt, 5 volt, 3 volt, and adjustable version. For, for example, we would like to convert the, we would like to generate the 5 volt, we are able to use the 5 volt fixed regulator. Otherwise, we can use the adjustable version based on our requirement. In this case, uh, the overload current is able to buy 3 amp. So, this IC is much with our requirement. So, after choosing the IC, we have to make the schematic design. Schematic design, we can um, we can refer to the data sheet of the that particular IC, and we can choose that we can select the component by reading their data sheet description. Uh, after finish the designing process of the schematic drawing, we have to convert it to the PCB design. This is pretty simple. In PCB design process, there are some of the tips we have to consider. The first one is keep the layout as compact as possible. The second one is place component as close to each other because in order to reduce the loop area and noise level. Consider the current to route the truck line, which means we have to consider the amount of current that we will apply in each truck line. For example, in this case, we will use 3 ampere. So in this case, if we route the output truck line with just uh, only a few, uh, for example, 10 meters, it will be banned. It is not able to handle it up to 3 ampere, something like that. Okay, the other thing is, route the truck as short as possible in order to protect the voltage draw effects. Okay, so here is the PCB design for the DC to DC back converter application using LM2596. In this case, I use the 5 volt fixed version. So let's take a look on the 3D view. So in this case, here is the input voltage pad and here is the output voltage pad. So if we apply the input voltage from this screw dominant here, we will receive the plus 5 volt output from this screw dominant. Okay, so let's take a look on the schematic drawing. In this schematic drawing, here is the input section and here is the output section. I, I use the screw terminal to apply the input voltage. In this screw terminal, I use the RS383M rectifier diode as for the rectifier application in order to protect the reverse polarity of the input voltage. After that, here is the capacitor filtering session. After that, we apply the input voltage to the LM2596 as back converter IC. In this case, in pin number 5, we have to see this on bar slash off. This one is the it is able to see so-called the anywhere pin of this particular IC. In this case, we are able to see on is with bar and off is with no bar. So, which means if we attach this to a uh, positive voltage, something like the positive voltage or some kinds of voltage, this particular IC will be which means disable. So if we would like to enable this particular IC, we must need to attach this pin to the ground. So which means by using this pin, we are able to control this board converter, this power supply from the microcontroller or drive, we can directly attach it to the ground. Okay, here is the output board session. Here is the LC filter using inductor and capacitor. And then after that, here is the flyweight diode session in order to put the back EMF after applying to this LC filter, we, have, we must need to feed back the output voltage to the FB pin, pin number 4. This chip is the fixed version, so we don't need any voltage divider circuitry to feedback. We just need to connect the feedback pin directly to the output. Okay, after that, we will receive the 5 volt. Here is the LED for the power indication. So, in this case, how we need to choose the inductor value and capacitor value? First of all, we must need to consider what is the range of our input voltage. In order to decide it, we must need to refer to the data sheet of this LM2596 X-5. By reading on this data sheet, we are able to know the minimum and maximum limitation of the input voltage of this particular IC. According to this data sheet, this particular IC are available in full version, 3.3V version, 5V version, 3 volt version, and adjustable output version, which just means the output voltage can be adjustable by using the voltage divider circuitry. In this data sheet, the maximum input voltage range up to 40 volt is already described, so we can say the maximum limitation of this particular IC is 40 volt. The other thing that we need to know is every data sheet has to try their test condition. For example, currently we are using LM2596 test 5.0 version. So in this case, they have already described for this particular version of 
test provision. In this case, they have already tested the input voltage greater than or equal to 7 volt and less than or equal to 40 volt. So which means we are able to say this particular IC can be applied from 7 volt to 40 volt. We can see the efficiency is also 80%. So which means the efficiency is in good condition for this back commuter. By roughly reading through the datasheet, we can make a directly reference to the datasheet for the schematic drawing. In this case, they have already described for the fixed output worry version. And also for the adjustable output version, they also describe the formula in order to calculate the output worry from R2 and R1, which is worry divided by the circuitry for the feedback. So which means the output worry of the adjustable version is decided by the R2 and R1, which is means the worry divider. By reading to this description, we are able to select the correct value for inductor and correct values of output capacitor. In this case, I have already chosen the 33 microhenry for inductor and 220 microfarad for the output capacitor. Okay, let's take a look for the rectifier diode specification. In this case, I have chosen the RS3 as the rectifier diode application. By reading through to this data sheet, we are able to see measurement every forward ready for your current S3 ampere. In this case, this every forward ready for your current must be covered to our output current. In this case, we hope we are able to use measurement 3 ampere as an output. So in this case, we also need to use the diode which is available to handle up to 3 ampere. So in this case, that's why I choose RS3 as our ready for your diode. And also for the inductor application, we have choose the 33 microhenry for the inductor. And then we also need to consider the maximum ampere for this inductor. Since we would like to use the maximum output current as 3 ampere, so which means the ampere of the inductor must be able to provide also the 3 ampere. So in this case, I have choose this inductor ms 127-330MT which is 33 microhenry and then the rate of DC current IDC is up to 3 ampere. And also for the flyweight diode application, in this case I have choose the SS34 Shockley barrier diode as a flyweight diode. By reading the data sheet of the SS34 diode, we are able to see measurement every forward ready for your current as 3 ampere. That's why I choose the SS34 as the Finally, diode application. Okay, let's take a look on the PCB layout. In this case, I have used the two layer PCB, F.CU and V.CU are included in this PCB. In this PCB, I have used the F.CU and V.CU for the ground filling and signal routing, which means I have made the ground zone in both of F.CU and V.CU. Here is the F.CU ground zone and also here is the V.CU ground zone. Okay, so let's turn off the ground zone for CN easily. So in this case, I do not connect the VDC screw terminal and this rectifier diode with, with a truck line because I would like to I would like to run the you know high current in this truck line. So I have made the you know phase zone connected mother. And also for the VIN to the LM2596 input pad line. I also use the phase zone connecting method by using like this way. So if we see in the phase zone, we will see like this. In the back converter design, placing the component as close as possible to each other is very important. By placing the component as close as possible to each other, we don't need to rub a long truck line to connect each component. So which means if we do not use the long truck line, there is no boring draw effect or something. There is no any noise signal. And also for the upper section, as like what we can see in the schematic drawing, firstly, the output line of the bath converter IC lm 2596 x will firstly need to go to the SS34 flyweight diode. After that, it will need to go to the integer and capacitor session. So we also need to follow this instruction also in the PCB layouts. So which means, firstly, the output line of the bath converter IC firstly need to go to the takes flying with diode as a straightforward, after that it need to go to the inductor. So in this case, I also route this output line by the phase out, not a truck line, in order to handle the high ambiorage. In this case, I just use the thick truck line. In this case, you can also use the phase out method or truck line, there's no problem. After that, we must need to feedback this capacitor output to the 
IC of this FIBA pin. As we can see in the schematic drawing, we have to FIBA the output worry to the FIBA pin of this particular IC. So after that, we must need to use the output worry of this back converter as the worry of capacitor. After that, I just connected it with the LED for the power indication. So finally, we have to sign for our simple DC to DC back converter application using LM2596. Siemens input volt is able to supply from 7 volt up to 40 volt, and after that, we will receive a 5 volt fixed output volt, and the current is up to 3 ampere. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to it and I hope you are able to learn something from this channel. Thank you for watching this video.